Here we take a look at the energy balance game. There are two basic learning objectives. The first one is related to this image. We want to just get a feel for these energy flows, radiation flows, into the atmosphere, back out of the atmosphere, reflected radiation for solar energy, as well as the infrared or long wave radiation going back out into space. The other learning objective is to try and get an idea of what climate scientists do when they look at detection and attribution of climate change. What they often do is they'll take a look at a temperature record like this. This is the global average land ocean temperature for the last 130 years or so. And they're trying to find out what happened to make this temperature record do what it's done. For example, there's a sharp drop here in temperature corresponding to the eruption of Mount Pinatubo and other interesting things. Uh, most scientists think that uh, global warming, greenhouse gases increasing the atmosphere has been responsible for much of this warming since 1950 or 1960. And in the early part of the century, much of the warming was due to an increase in solar radiation. So those are the two basic learning objectives. The uh, game essentially pops up in a window here, and you've got a game that you have to match with the model simulation. Okay, We can click on this game program here, and I'll say save it. I'm using Firefox right now, and up here in the corner there's a way I can click on this, and then I'll just click on the game, and it should open up in a new window. Down at the bottom of the screen, this isn't a web browser based or anything like that, but at the bottom of the screen there's a cup of Java looking thing, and so that's what this is. You can click on the cup of Java and you can get a description or go back into the model. And the way it works out is there's a run button here, you click on it, and the model should start out in equilibrium. The global mean surface temperature of 288 Kelvin, or about 15 degrees Celsius, which is representative, uh, representative of today's climate. We can then play the first game, and we have to match that with our simulation. Again, if, if I just click on this and do nothing, there's no match at all. But I can do some things to increase the temperature, put more water vapor into the atmosphere, I can either enter with the text box, but if I do that, I have to make sure to press the enter key, or I can use the slider and change those things. But I'll put a little bit more water vapor in and see if that does the job. Hmm. That barely increased it at all. The amount of water vapor here, 1.01, .01, is 1% greater than what it is today. So these numbers are all 1, except for the carbon dioxide amount. That's actually parts per million. And the other thing, uh, the uh, surface ocean, ocean depth or mixed layer depth of 100 meters is an actual number. The other numbers are relative. One more, the CO2 growth rate would be the actual percentage increase in carbon dioxide each year. Okay, but so uh, let me try 1.1 on the water. And still, that's not, not quite large enough. You should be able to get a pretty good fit between the model and observations by changing that or carbon dioxide or a variety of things you could change. You could make the surface albedo less, and that should absorb more sunlight. Oh, and we're off the charts there with that. So that was way too warm. So the first game's pretty easy. Game two... Every time you click on this, you get a new game. <clears throat> Let me just tell you, game two, you can do just what you did with game one, but you'll also have to... Well, let, me, let me go ahead and just say that the surface albedo, I'm going to jump it up. Notice how it increases so rapidly, but if I change the 
depth of the mixed layer ocean, I went from 100 to 300, then run that, and that gives us some sluggishness. So that's the big difference between game one and two, is that there's more sluggishness in the response. It moves slower. It will end up at the same place, ultimately, but it gets there more slowly. And so that's your hint on game two, is a play around with the ocean mixed layer depth. And then on game three, there's a volcanic eruption. I'll let you figure out when the eruption was initiated. You have to click this checkbox down here for volcanic. So everything on this one row, volcanic dust veil, checkbox for eruption, and eruption year, are all in the same row affecting uh, volcanoes. And I'll put it at year seven. Not that that's right, but just you know to show you how this works. And then I'll give it a run. <coughs> Obviously, year seven is not the correct year. And the dust veil index, the strength of the eruption, isn't strong enough. In game four, let me look at game three again and game four. Game four is, again, another one of those ocean depth. The ocean mixed layer depth is deeper so that the eruption doesn't cause it to get as cool. And it recovers more slowly. And then game five is a bit of a challenge. But I found the easiest way to do this, obviously, I think quite obviously, there's a volcanic eruption. But forget about the volcanic eruption to begin with. So let's say that you have to do something to make it colder. So I'll, I'll pick on the surface albedo. And that'll make it a little bit colder. It should if I increase the surface albedo. Oh, it made it too cold. But I could adjust that. But get a good match to the first part. And then the only thing that in this model simulation environment that will give you a gradual increase is the CO2 growth. And so I'm going to get that and match that until I get a pretty good match towards the end. That's not the best either. But get a good match between the first part and the last part. And then, as your last step, add the volcano in. And I think you'll have pretty good success fairly easily. Okay, good luck. And uh, ask questions if you have.